Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. <laughs> and we talk about... You, say... <laughs> what? you said that like a question. <laughs> Screams After Midnight? <laughs> Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot for a split second what show I was introducing, so it came out kind of weird. But we, we talk about horror movies on this show, and on this episode we are talking about American Psycho, which was the winner of a Patreon vote. Um, every month on patreon.com slash TV we put up a vote uh, for our patrons to vote on, and the theme uh, for, for this month, uh, for this vote was uh, uh, female directors, and the winner was American Psycho, directed by Mary Harron. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start spoiler free as we always do, we'll give you a warning before we go into spoilers somewhere in the middle, and here we go, so... Are you excited, Tim? Yes. I assume you've seen this uh, before. This wasn't your first time. Correct. Yes. <laughs> so, uh... The, the, the <laughs> <laughs> Tim's really... Yeah, you gotta give the, give the plot synopsis. I know. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you're being so weird and, like, quiet and, like, stilted, Tim. It's weird. It's not like you. You usually got something stupid to say, at least. <laughs> I, I'm very polite. I, I do not like to interrupt. I like the, you know, I'll let you do your thing. Bullshit. <laughs> Absolute bullshit. Anyway. So yeah, so this is, uh, this is uh, American Psycho. It is a film about uh, a character called Patrick Bateman, played by Christian Bale, who is uh, set in the 80s and he's this yuppie. He's works on Wall Street. He's always wearing a suit. He cares about his image, his look. Uh, the, you know, he's, he's very obsessed with just, you know, having the best things, the best type of suit, the best business cards, the best, you know, dining at the best restaurants. It's all about the superficial image of, of what he wants life to look like. Uh, but he, of course, is also a psychopath and likes to kill people. Uh, so it's a very satirical film. Um, and yeah, so we're going to dive into it. So Tim, do you enjoy American yeah. Psycho? <sighs> you know, I'm going to let some people down, but I'm not really that big on this movie i uh i don't think it's a bad movie like uh like obviously christian bale is very very um you know pa patrick bateman obviously is not like you know a you know, likable character or anything mm. but you know bale uh does a very good job of you know making him very engaging and he's very fun to watch uh and i mean i get what the movie's trying to do but it's like so on the nose you know what i mean mm. like it's <laughs> Like it's very blunt. Like it, yes, it is a satirical film, but uh, <laughs> there's no like, you know, shred of doubt <laughs> of like what they're trying to do. And I don't know. Some of it works, and it, it's not a bad movie, but it just doesn't like, just doesn't really sing to me. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I like it a, f a fair bit actually. Um, I I don't know if I like it as much as a horror movie as I do. But to me, I think of this as like a dark comedy. Like yeah. it's. Like I, I, I'm not. I wouldn't dispute it being a horror movie at all. Like you know, it, it's certainly, you know, it's about a psycho. But yeah, um, and there's a couple of scenes that feel, you know, when he's running around with a chainsaw at one point. It's like, yeah, this yeah. feels like a horror movie for a minute. <laughs> but like, it, it feels like it's it's more of this, yeah, this dark satire of of just kind of being in his head and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a character study, which and in, in turn is a study of. Uh, of the 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 superficial ego and and all that kind of thing and you know and, and you know and it's funny because we we just recorded a review for us uh, at the time of recording and uh, obviously that was also largely about uh, social class and, and capitalism. This also is about capitalism and kind of this boom in the eighties and um, the idea of the image and being obsessed with being the best and be, being the, the <laughs> you know like I say having the having the best car the best suit the best everything being filthy rich all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and this movie is largely him feeling insecure when, when anyone else has something that's better than him he gets upset and it leads to someone mm -hmm. dying is essentially yeah. the thing so I, I, I enjoy I think I enjoy it largely because of his performance I think if you didn't have Christian Bale in this yeah. and there's a lot of actors in this you recognise you know Willem Dafoe's got a small role role mm -hmm. Jared Leto's in there uh, Justin Theroux's in there Reese Willis-Balloon Chloe Savini um, Samantha Mathis who I recognised and went who is that again and then I remember she's uh, Peach in the Super Mario Brothers movie <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. I know. I know. What a cool. pull. <laughs> what a pull. Um, so you know, like, like there's, there's a lot going on, and yeah, uh, it's entertaining. It's funny I mean, in I, places. You know. 
Oh no, I mean, I, I just agree with you definitely that the, you know, the, the MVP of this movie is Bale for sure. Like he just really brings, uh, you know, a level to the performance that is very, very fun to watch. Like even though I'm not like crazy about the movie, like it's, yeah, I can't really imagine, you know, like anyone else in the role. Anytime he starts talking about like a, a band, you know, he's like, oh, "Do you like you listen to the news?" And he goes on about, oh, "I didn't really like the first album because it was very new wave." And he's like, "This is yeah. this very superficial review speak that he starts doing," uh, and it just it feels like, "Oh, this is really like, like this is all about." He, he, he comes across as someone who doesn't actually care about any of this shit. He just wants people to think <laughs> he does. Um, oh yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it totally sounds like you know, uh, like you said, he needs to be like the have the best everything be the best at everything and it sounds like that's even like you know he has to speak about music the best like he has to seem the most interesting and have like <clears throat> the you know like the best take which you know oddly enough i, I felt like <laughs> that was kind of maybe the most relevant part because it just really reminds me the way you know people talk online and like <laughs> you know uh, and like, you know, sometimes people are very passionate about st some stuff, and sometimes you get the idea though that sometimes people just want to seem the most interesting, so they have to have like the most unique take and, and about this obscure thing that you know no one else really thinks about as much as them. So I, I thought yeah. that was kind of interesting. Yeah, and you know, there's this energy to the movie. There's this energy to every scene, largely because of Bale, who's in almost every scene. I don't, maybe yeah. maybe even every scene. There's, there's very few i can think of where he's not yeah. there or, or you know it's not revolving around him yeah you know i i hate to uh, uh you know, i hate to throw a curveball uh, uh, at you here but uh well since the the theme was you know female directors I, i'm curious uh what else has a uh, has she directed if i don't know if you have the imdb up uh, of course I, but, I'm, I'm a professional how dare you <laughs> Because I do think it was a uh, directed pretty well, like you yeah, know, it's, I, a, uh, it's a well directed movie for sure. Like, there's definitely like some like very memorable scenes that you know uh, that really like stick out in your head. Let me see. Let me see here. Um, a lot of TV episodes, so not a bunch okay. of movies. Uh, in terms of movies, The Moth Diaries. So uh, not Mothman Diaries, just The Moth Diaries. Just The Moth Diaries, and then uh, Charlie okay. Says from 2018, and apparently right now she's working on uh, Dally Land. Uh, Dali land. D Dali, yeah, D A L I, Dali. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so she's done a bunch of movies. Uh, the Moth Diaries. Uh, Interesting. As a fantasy horror <laughs> film, but set at a boarding school, so we got a four point nine IMDb. So it doesn't seem like it's well loved. Oh, okay. uh, but, I said I said the Mothman Diaries, but I'm remembering it's Mothman Prophecies now. So <laughs> before go. anyone corrects me, <laughs> do it. Correct them. Just do it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, not, not a lot of. I mean, she's done episodes of like some pretty prominent TV shows, but not a lot of movies. Um, okay, which is weird. You, you think after this one, she may have got a bit more. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't know how it did at the time, but it certainly has like you know, it's like would probably be considered like a cult classic. Yeah, know, no, at this point. It's, it's got a following. It's very gifable. I there's so many gifts in this, like so many moments yeah. in this film where I was like, <laughs> I have seen that gif a hundred million times now at this point. You know. Yeah. Uh, now, I will say a, a little bit of a personal bias here. This is, you know, n no fault of the movie, but uh, like it, it is a little bit hard for me because I do feel like this was one of those movies when I, I was going to college that like annoying people like to talk about. Like, <laughs> you know, people like, like I feel like stuff like this in Fight Club, like people want to tell I you knew, like. I knew you were going to say Fight Club. <laughs> can, I, can I also add in Donnie Darko onto this list? Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 And. And like, you know, and it's one of those things where people like they want to explain to you, even though like these are all like pretty popular movies, but then there's always this type of person that wants to explain to you why it's good. But the the reason why it's good that other people don't realize like, oh, you know, uh, it, not a lot of people understand this about the movie, but it's actually saying this and it's just, uh, yeah. So no fault of the movie or, you know, not even, a, you know, not even like those other movies. You know, it's just sometimes you associate a, a movie with the kind of people <laughs> that like annoyed you with it. Yeah. Um, although I'll go on record, Donnie Darko's not that good. I'm saying it. I, you know, I uh, I loved it in high school, which I think is probably the perfect time to watch that movie. I <laughs> don't know how I'd feel about it now, but. Oh, yes. yeah. Um, <laughs> also, did you ever see Southland Tales, the director's follow up film? Dear Lord, uh, yeah, that is 
incomprehensible. Oh god, that movie. <laughs> that, 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 that's a that's a that's a drunk commentary track waiting to happen. Um, yeah, thank God it's not a horror movie because oh yeah, <laughs> we'd have to do it on the show. But it's certainly horrific in some ways, but <laughs> not, yeah. not, not not genre. <laughs> uh, so no, I, I think the movie has an energy to it. Uh, a big part yeah. of that as well is the setting and the, the soundtrack. There's a lot of eighties tracks, of course, and the music mm-hmm. gives it this upbeat kind of feel, uh, which kind of goes alongside his his facade of what he's he's pretending to be but like you know nicely contrast with what, who he really is and all the dark things that he's actually doing uh and there's, a lot, there's a lot of moments where he'll say something that he doesn't actually say out loud but it sounds like to us he does but the other characters don't react to it where you know he'll, see, he'll threaten to kill someone you know like, oh, you know, i'm going to rip off your face and piss on it or something like that and yeah. the characters won't react to it and it's just okay you just sort of get it um, and there's the infamous business card scene where he, he shows them his new business card and everyone's like, oh, that's very nice. And then one of them goes, no, but how about my business card? I got one too. And he starts sweating because it's like, oh, <laughs> how dare he show one that's better than mine? And to us, to the audience, it looks identical. It looks the exact same. Yeah. And then they all start showing their business cards uh, and he's he's livid, absolutely livid. <laughs> it, it reminds me a lot of, uh, I'm assuming that you know, this will be a reference that's lost on you, but like it reminded me of the kids in the hall sketch because they they like made fun of businessmen a lot in the sketch and like uh, this is like the kind of stuff uh, they would do, but mm. it, <laughs> it really reminded me of that. God, I love kids in the hall. All right, continue. Yeah, it actually plays into one of the other themes of the movie is that Patrick Bateman is actually constantly like uh recognized as someone else like an, as another yuppie essentially oh, yeah. and that happens quite a few times in the film um and it's one of the themes of the movie is that they all kind of just blend together and you can't really tell them apart and mm-hmm. like I, I think the business card scene goes along with that because it's like yeah to them it's like oh no mine's just better and mine's just better it's like no they look the exact same stop it you, you all look identical <laughs> and i I, I forget. Do we ever know uh, exactly what he does, or is it just kind of like this vague business job? It's just vague on Wall Street, yeah. But okay. he, he is very rich for twenty-seven. He's done well. Whatever he's doing. Oh sh. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, so. I, I feel like that's like another thing, though, where like sometimes you see these people and like. It, they'll, they'll even try to tell you what their job is but like you still don't understand they're like so like oh like so what do you do it's like oh i'm in business i'm in finance and like all right yeah. but what do you do and then like yeah they, they tell you all this stuff like oh well you know it's all about uh you know optimization and uh you know uh maximizing finance and stuff it's like okay but what what exactly do you do yes what do you do like, you know at, at 10 10 a.m <laughs> tomorrow morning what are you doing in the office yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you physically doing uh <laughs> Yeah, so, so you, you've got all that stuff at play, and uh, yeah, obviously, obviously the satire is obvious. The idea that they're all trying to be the same yeah. person—it's the sort of thing you could easily do the same plot with, like, like I, I've never seen the sequel, and I'm, I, I guess we have to do it because so, I, I think the sequel is more of a slasher <laughs> movie from what I've seen of the poster. The, the sequel is insane. <laughs> Great, perfect for us. Perfect. <laughs> But so you so see, you've got like a because you, you could almost do the same plot, but instead of doing like businessmen in Wall Street in the eighties, you could do like like a bunch of blondes who've all had plastic surgery in like like you know California. Sure. Yeah. The, the idea that it's like all these people who are trying to be the same, uh, you could do the exact same kind of plot with them. That'd be interesting, uh, yeah. and, you know, and just have one of them be a psychopath. Like it would almost be a fun companion piece to this movie. Uh, you could you could do it with a number of types of people i suppose but like those, those are the ones that, that spring to mind and I, I i feel like the movie does a good pretty good job at that um the ending that's quite murky we'll talk about the ending of course in spoilers uh but it's actually interesting because i was looking this up to see just you know what, what are the going opinions these days and apparently i found some quotes from the director oh, uh, okay. well the director herself thinks that she actually uh, made some mistakes with the ending because she she Ooh. she actually doesn't th- the reaction that a lot of people have is not what was intended and she feels that that's a, that's a fault of her that she didn't uh like make the ending ambiguous in the way that she wanted it to be ambiguous but we'll talk about that in spoilers because oh, okay. i can't say why <laughs> oh i'm interested in finding out yeah and actually w- one thing i was trying to think of is like uh it's like oh is this like a movie that's been like co-opted by shitty dudes yet like <laughs> I, like i don't know like I, I can just see this as being the kind of thing where like stupid people are like you know this guy's pretty cool like <laughs> <laughs> i want to be patrick like, bateman when i grew up yeah <laughs> i think the people that watch like wolf of wall street and they're like those seem like some all right guys like <laughs> i want to hang out with them <laughs> do you <laughs> oh, that's not the point of the movie <laughs> 
Do, 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 do you feel weird watching it? Because I, I, obviously, I assume it's been a long time since I've seen this, and it's been a f- yeah. fairly long time since I've seen it. Um, Honestly, I think I've only seen it once, like yeah. probably early-ish 2000s. And, but yeah. did, did it feel weird to you when he said his age was 27? You're like, shit, I'm older than he is in this movie now. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I, I, I don't enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, he looks... Like, I feel like he... And it's, I'm not saying that I don't look cool. I'm not trying to say that I look young and like spry or anything. Like I just like I look at adults that age in movies and I'm like they look like mature yeah. people. Like they're they're you know he's a businessman. Yeah. You know he's, he's like he works on Wall Street yeah. and I'm like <laughs> I look like a kid by comparison to this with a beard. Yeah, I mean like like even if I do like have to dress up or something and, and like put a suit on, like I still feel like I just look like a kid in a suit or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't it feel doesn't. like I, it, yeah it fits. It feels like it's yeah like you're pretending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine being in the fifties when everyone was wearing about a, a shirt and tie all the time. Everyone was wearing a suit all the time. Yeah. And hats. I remember like in like the like in like the sixties and like the uh you know, like first issues of Spider Man when he would just like always be wearing like a sweater vest and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or like <laughs> like wears like a dress shirt to high school. Like, what are you doing, Peter? <laughs> what am i doing what are you accusing me of uh <laughs> so yeah i guess we'll give a spoiler warning so we can we can talk about everything sure. uh so full spoilers for the movie so yeah you know, I, I think the, i think the movie like i say has got a really good pace to it like it, it goes in very quickly it's 100 minutes but it goes in so fast uh to the point where i'm like by the time when i, when I realized the ending was hitting i was like, oh shit yeah we're at the end already damn um but yeah, yeah. so the thing that director uh Harren said about the ending is that a lot of people watch this and come out of it going oh he didn't he never killed anyone it was, it was all in his head the whole time i i yeah i, I kind of was wondering uh, about that but i wasn't necessarily sure uh I, I think the thing that was maybe a little confusing was when he was talking to the therapist at the party near mm-hmm. the end uh, and they were talking about the i think it's jared leto's character who he was saying that he killed early and the guy's like what yeah, the, the lawyer, uh, not the therapist. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, lawyer. Uh, and he was like, oh, yeah, no, I, I talked to him, like, uh, you know, like, le- like yeah. le- earlier this week or something. Yeah, you've got that, and, and then you've got the scene where he goes to Jared Little's apartment where he's been stashing bodies, but it's, like, empty, and it's just basically been on sale for a while, and, and his character's apparently never lived there kind of thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, so so the director's like, no, there's the, the, not meant to be this weird ambiguous thing where did he or did he not kill anyone? It's the, like he may or may not have killed everyone that we saw him kill, but he's definitely a serial killer. Because I remember the first time I watched it, I came out of this movie going, he never killed anyone. Everything's been in his head the whole time. Yeah. Um, but that's apparently not the intention. And uh, I start, <laughs> okay. I, start I start to you know think about it, and I think what I was saying earlier about how he keeps getting because this was something I didn't remember from the original film, well not the original film, the original time I saw it, you know, the last couple of times I saw it, I don't remember this. It was this idea that he, he keeps being mistaken. You know, one of the reasons why he thinks he can get away with the murder of Jared Leto is Jared Leto thinks he's this other guy named Marcus. So he puts in his diary that he's got a, 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 a meeting with Marcus. So he's the main mm-hmm. suspect kind of thing. Oh, uh, right, right, right. right. Uh, okay. So there's, there's this running thing that people are mistaking him. So I was thinking at the end of the movie, is, is the lawyer, like, has he done the same thing with Jared Leto? Is he, like, mistaken, like, his character for someone else? Oh, maybe. Okay, I didn't think about that, but that's yeah. good. Um, yeah. and uh, as far as the apartment goes like did he just go to a, a different apartment again in the idea that it's the same like building but he's he's went to a different place so he's went to a different you know an identical uh, apartment like oh, uh, that's that's actually really interesting yeah I, I didn't think about that but that actually yeah. like, makes sense if okay yeah that's the idea that they keep being mistaken for each other because they all feel the, the same people they're all just carbon copies of each other uh, yeah. and I'm like okay that makes sense I actually kind of like that as an mm-hmm. ending which implies that he either killed everyone or he at least killed most people but not his rival and you could argue that if he didn't kill Jared Leto then he's so angry and kills so many other people because he wants to kill Jared Leto and can't kind of thing I don't know. oh okay yeah. and I guess that, that kind of like fits into like with the the end when he like goes in like to the wrong office building and like kills the security guard and stuff like yeah but the, the office building yeah. that he goes into is identical to the other one that he actually yeah. actually has and the, the, oh, okay. the, the security guard yeah. in the wrong office building even named he calls him Mr. Smith so again he's, he's mistaken right, yeah. for some other yuppie <laughs> oh okay I mean yeah, I, I like that I yeah I admit I didn't really uh yeah, we'll catch that at first, but that kind of fits with everything. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if she mentioned in the interview or anything, did she say if, like, 
there was something she wanted to put in that she didn't or was it just like no nah, there was no specifics like that so, it was just more of a general okay. like the, the, you know, the feeling that everyone gets at the end is not necessarily the feeling that she thinks that was intended and therefore okay. she, you know she felt she felt like she failed in that some level there um I, and, a, and what's what makes that like interesting too is you kind of get the idea that maybe he wants to be caught like because it seems like you know because he confesses he you know calls and leaves a confession and you know he's crying at the end and like it seems like he you know kind of uh, and I, I think maybe in a way that that tracks with like real life serial killers like you know it seems like people a lot of times will want to be caught like they'll leave clues or yeah kind of make mistakes that and I think yeah. I think if that represents something in terms of the the themes of the movie it's that the real him was like subdued by like this fake lifestyle and a you could argue that subduing who you are can make you not necessarily become a serial killer but can make you, you look, go unhinged can you know you could be unhealthy yeah. right in this case it's made a serial killer out of him or and secondly this idea that he's just desperate for people to know the real him that you know that, that's why he wants to be caught is he wants people to know who he really is um so you could do like that and then the other aspect of this that i really like is that at the end, when he actually tells the therapist, hey, I've killed people, because he, he thinks, oh, I got that answering machine message. He left me. <laughs> Funny joke, by the way. Yeah, you killed all these people. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I really did that. And he's like, no, this isn't funny anymore. And he doesn't believe him. And it's this idea that, you know, again, if you go back to the, the social commentary, that, you know, rich people, like, they just don't expect it from him, so they just won't believe him. <laughs> like, he literally, yeah. like... Because uh, the, the one time there's a hint that things aren't happening for real is when he's he's been chased by the cops and it, it you know it starts off pretty simple just two cops chasing him from a distance and he goes through the building or through an alleyway and then there's more cop cars show up and he takes out a gun and shoots at the cop cars and it explodes like really over the top <laughs> in a movie way but he reacts kind of accordingly he kind of reacts like what really that exploded yeah. that much and that's like the one sign where it's like no things are at least being heightened through his eyes because yeah. he's, 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 obviously the other big thing is uh, the atm machine saying feed me the cat yeah. <laughs> Like <laughs> clearly, things are are coming through his his filter, and we're seeing things as he sees them. And it's like, okay, so I believe the cops were maybe chasing him to a point, but maybe not once he went through the you know and lost them for a bit, and then the other yeah. cars came up. Maybe that was not like because yeah, I mean, if he was actually shooting at the cops, like you know, there's going to be they're not going to just lose him <laughs> after that. He's, he's not exactly yeah, being true. he's being very frantic and just running around. It's not like he's got this plan to escape the cops and like you know lose the tail and whatnot. Um, yeah, so it plays it, play, it plays in thematically to the the idea of like no one believing him, um, and the idea of this warped sense of reality as, as a part of the movie. So it it becomes a question of like, so did he kill Jared Leto? Maybe not, but did he kill the homeless man? He probably did, because that's a really simple yeah. one kind of thing. <laughs> sure. um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Uh... Yeah, and I wonder if that would be, like, part of the message, too. Like, maybe he didn't actually kill any of the, like, you know, rich white businessmen, but then the, the you though. know, homeless person and the mm. prostitutes. Yeah, those <laughs> he actually did kill. Yeah, and those scenes are very memorable because, again, he gets these two prostitutes and it's all about the image. He Because earlier, earlier on in the film, he's on the phone with his, his fiancée, Reese Wallerspoon, which, by the way, his breakup scene with her is amazing because he just... <laughs> Because he's like, I don't think we should get married. And she's like, oh, don't be silly. We can't do that. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and again, this ties into this idea of people wanting, him wanting to people to meet the real him. Because yeah. the, the the marriage is just all kind of a sham. It's, he doesn't really care about it. Mm. And her immediate reaction is, no, we can't do it. Don't be silly. We've put a lot of thought into this. All our friends are shared. We can't do that. Because again, she basically says, no, we have to get married because it would, it would you know, break appearances. It would, it would you know, sully yeah, our reputation. It's... Yeah, it's convenient for them. It's part of our like uh, our social status, our yeah. identity. It's you know, never at any point does she mention like, "Oh, I love you." Yeah, yeah. we love each other. We can't do this. But he's like, "No, oh, I'm good." That's just that's not yeah. that. Uh, so it's this idea that he wants to maybe break away from that, and his craziness is actually him wanting to break out of the the, the strict society or the, the strict like social image that he's he's trapped in. I guess if you want to call it that. Um, yeah. But he doesn't really care about it. It's not like he doesn't care. He does going to get, like I say, he sweats when the business cards are getting shown and stuff. So he does care, <laughs> but maybe this idea that he wants to break away from that and not care about these things and just care about something he's actually passionate about. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, so when he's phoning her early on, he's, he's, he's got porn on the TV. He's watching a porn tape. And then <laughs> later on, he, he gets these two prostitutes. He has one off the street and he has one that's more of an, a, an upper-class escort and it's like no make sure she's blonde you know proper blonde and when she, she arrives like oh that's not really quite blonde it's more of a dirty blonde he's, he's very critical of it 
but he has this this threesome scene with them uh which he, he sort of orders into in between talking about uh genesis he's talking about phil collins <laughs> yeah. every so often he'll, he'll interject like a, an instruction and then you know he films them having sex he wants to make his own porn tape but he spends more time looking at himself on camera in the, in the mirror to make sure he looks good than he does actually enjoying the sex it's all about yeah. the image it's not about the actual thing itself it's about the image of what he's doing uh you know it's, it's, there's that famous like shot of him sort of pointing at himself in the mirror and sort of winking at himself you know that, that famous <laughs> moment yeah. it's all, all about that obsession um and then again he has he has her back later with her, with the other woman and instead of you know like again like enough time that the sex isn't enough you know the first time he, he hurts mm-hmm. them and that's why the one prostitute he has come back christy she's like hesitant mm-hmm. to do so but he pays her so much money that she's willing to do it which again a critique of, of capitalism and then this you know social mm-hmm. structure is that she's forced into it for, for the money um but you know he inst- the, the second time he he goes fuller he kills them you know this is this is the yeah. crazy scene where he's running with a chainsaw uh naked uh you know down the hallways uh and yeah and this is an argument for maybe why like it is fake like no one heard this chainsaw in the middle of the night in this apartment building as he's running down That's the hallway true. But at the same time, if if that other apartment he goes to at the end is in the same hallway, are, are there more of them? Are, are they empty? Is there a lot of these apartments empty right now? Kind of thing. It's true. You know, but you, yeah. you sort of think both ways. And you could probably also make an argument for, you know, the idea that, oh, it's probably other rich people in this apartment mm. and, you know, they're not going to, you know, uh, put their safety aside and go investigate or help someone that, you know, is in trouble, especially, you know, someone of lower class, like, yeah, they're probably just putting blinders on or something. Yeah, you could almost say, yeah, it's another example of, like, the rich ignoring uh, the needs of others and, like, Mm -hmm. them, uh, like, that's almost the idea that, like, all all these yuppies, all these rich folk who do all this sort of stuff, they have all these dark secrets and, like, prostitutes and things they get away with, um, and everyone turns a blind eye. Uh, and this is an extension of that. Is like you know he's chasing her down the hall naked with a chainsaw. No, no one's opening the yeah. door and checking on her or checking what's going on. Um, and uh, I mean, it feels weird to say because it's a you know naked Christian Bale chasing a woman with a chainsaw, but it is like a really like well done fun scene. Yeah, it's not and just the the ending as well. Like looking he, at the because he just, oh, yeah, he just when he throws the chainsaw, it down the yeah, stairway. He just drops it down yeah. Stairways, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, I think like the probably the two scenes that like stick out the most uh, to me is yeah that and uh, uh, the scene where he murders you know Jared Leto. I just think uh, you know there's uh, like uh, the chainsaw scene is good. It, it is like a little darker, but I think the Jared Leto scene is like actually like really funny. Just the way like Bale is kind of moving like in the background as he's talking about you know uh, uh, then he might be talking about Huey Lewis. Yeah, Huey Lewis. He's, 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 put, he's putting yeah. on the raincoat. He's getting the axe. He's yeah. sort of dancing a little bit here or there. Yeah, it's like it's it, you know he really like sells it just like being like yeah he's like so goofy in the background and stuff and then uh yeah like everything is covered in the apartment which is you know really funny yeah and you know he's and Gerald Little's so blame drunk he's unaware of what's happening uh and, yeah. and you know, eventually Bill just screams and hits him in the back of the head with an axe and he, <laughs> he, he, he hacks at him a bunch of times so he's, he's his face is covered in blood he takes off the raincoat so he's clean except his face which is covered in blood and then he, he has a cigar <laughs> Uh, whilst his face is covered in blood, there's, just, there's the imagery of it is there, and I guess it's also the, the you know the, the the cutthroat world of Wall Street. I guess he's he's, he's killed a, some of the competition. I guess you maybe could say something there yeah. as well. The imagery of yeah. uh, you know there's blood on their hands, kind of thing, or in this case, that, that's face. what I. Yeah, like that's kind of like my big takeaway is like, ooh, these you know like uh, Wall Street money finance people are ruthless, and it's kind of just taking that to the you know ultimate degree. Like they're, you know, like like they're called sharks and stuff, and it's like you know uh, just ruthless business people. And oh, okay, what if they were literally you know killing people? Yeah. Um, and actually, another piece of evidence that he didn't kill Jared Leto <laughs> is that we have this other character, uh, the, the detective played by Willem Dafoe, who oh, yeah. actually finds out that uh, Bateman has an alibi for the murder. He was actually at this meeting with other people. But again, do you question, did they mistake mm-hmm. someone else for Patrick Bateman <laughs> and say that he was there yeah. when he wasn't <laughs> kind of thing? Like, it's possible. It's a running thing in the movie, so it totally could be. Yeah. <laughs> so I like that aspect of it. Um so that's really good. And then the other, I think the other big thing is the one person he doesn't go through with killing is his secretary. His, uh, secretary. Yeah. yeah. Who's actually kind of sweet and seems to kind of like him. 
and yeah. you know she eventually chooses to leave uh, during the date when he's looking for like a a, a, a weapon. <laughs> he's he's looking at it and he's yeah. like, you see the chainsaw, you see all these things, and he's not willing to do it to her. And it's almost like he knows her too much as a person to do it, perhaps. Yeah. Um. Uh. Or I mean, it's not even necessarily his choice. Like, but he is more hesitant for sure. Uh, and ultimately, she actually learns who he is by seeing his his his, uh, his drawings in the book, his, his diary later. Oh on. yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I I do love like the the scene that kind of like you know sets up their you know getting together that night. However, when he calls the restaurant to make reservations, mm. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, and he has no intention of actually going to the restaurant. He's just like she thinks yeah. they are, but he's like, oh, we'll meet in my place for drinks. He his yeah. plan is to kill her. He 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 needs to have another kill at that point. Yeah, it's just like funny hearing the other the guy on the other end of the line he's like so 9 30 then the guy's like no i just told you we're all booked up he's like sounds great see you then <laughs> and it's also like yeah there's this running theme with this one restaurant that it's really hard to get reservations at and this is what he's trying to call right now and he's really pissed earlier on because jared Leto can get in there and i'm like okay if if, if if none of these people can actually get reservations there then who's actually getting these reservations that's always <laughs> booked up and i guess it's like oh it's the even richer people it's the the billionaires who are all there all the time yeah. i guess i don't know <laughs> Uh, it was it was cracking me up just thinking of this, um, mm. but again, it's, it's this uh, this uh, materialistic kind of like all the supply and demand thing almost yeah. like because it's exclusive, yeah. they all want to get in, and that's like this that is symbol kind of thing. Yeah, there's like so much stuff in it that it's like you know you, you never really question oh is this stuff actually good is it worth it is there a point to it it's just the idea of oh no i have to have it because of yeah appearances or to you know further my brand i need it yeah um yeah so so the, the, the obviously the movie's full of superficial characters but the movie itself is very much not superficial um but I, I think, yeah, you, you can critique the ending, especially having the director admit that most people come out of it thinking that none of the killings happened was not intentional. You can critique that and say, well, that is a mistake then, because it does give you that, maybe that give you that impression. But knowing that it's not supposed to mean that, you start looking at the other, the other evidence, you start thinking about it. You're like, okay. I can kind of see it. It does, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, knowing that, it does kind of make me, even though I said I'm not, like, the biggest fan of it, it does make me kind of be like, uh, I might be interested to go watch it again. I think kind of <laughs> keeping that stuff in mind a little bit more. I, I think it's a sign of a, a, at least an interesting movie, if not a good movie, that talking about what the film is really about uh, can enhance your thoughts of it, but especially enhance an, another viewing, where you go back and watch it again and go, okay, this is what this means and what that means, and kind of thing and i'm sure we've not hit on yeah. everything I'm, I'm sure this this is the sort of movie i'm sure that people can write a book on if they <laughs> if they yeah if they want well, to it is based on a book <laughs> that's true well that's, you know what i mean like, like an <laughs> analytical book not not the the novel that it's like i know it's a novel first i'm yeah. aware thank you very much <laughs> oh, dear. Dear, dear 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 um but yeah, uh, and it is interesting that because you're right, I, I, I never really thought about it. But he does avoid killing, like he never kills his fiance. He never kills, uh, like the woman that he's having an affair with. He never kills the the only rich person he kills in the entire movie is Jared Leto, and that's the only yeah. that's that's the one we were debating: did he really do it or not? Did that really happen? Yeah, interesting. So that is interesting. Everyone yeah. else he kills, I th I think is. I, well, I guess the exception is he's, he's got that one woman the, the second time he has the prostitute uh, there's mm -hmm. that woman who's his friend from a, a long time ago she's the only one who's uh, not yeah. either a prostitute or homeless or a random person in the street because the, the first person he kills actually we don't see it is he's with that woman on the street at the traffic lights and he just kind of smiles at her oh and, and then yeah, it, 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 it starts just starts like following her yeah and it cuts to him just like putting his uh, dry cleaners he's got his sheets covered in red um, oh yeah <laughs> You got red on you. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and, <laughs> Just watch that last week. Yeah, I have to return some videotapes. <laughs> he says that like four times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like always his excuse, like for whenever he yeah. had to leave, which I thought that was pretty funny. Well, it's, it's not socially acceptable for a man to say I'm washing my hair, so he had to come up with something else. Oh, true. <laughs> uh, too bad you can't. I guess you can't use that excuse anymore. I, and nowadays you could say, like, I what, I, I only have an hour left to watch this movie I rented online or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you have to give stuff back to Redbox, right? True, yeah. So, well, it's not as good, admittedly. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to be charged that extra dollar. I gotta go. There's, there's a stream on... 
<laughs> that yeah. I watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite uh, Twitch streamer is playing uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm sorry, but I can't miss it. It's important. <laughs> hey, <Tim. laughs> What's up? <laughs> Sometimes I think you may be an American psycho. Mm, maybe. Whereas I'm, I'm whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think I'm like whatever the nice version of a psycho is. <laughs> Gary Busey. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's. Yeah, I guess whatever. Whatever, like a person that goes around and helps people instead of murdering them. A good Samaritan? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Look what... Yeah, sure. What are you aiming for here? <laughs> I'm just saying I'm a very good person. Mm. Yeah, no, nothing. Nothing sounds as 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 uh, you know, <laughs> as as uh, tightly woven and like true as when someone says they themselves are a good person. <laughs> I helped an old lady uh, cross the street once. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I have actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Multiple times. I used to work at a bingo hall, Tim. The amount of times I'd have to help an old oh, lady cross the street right outside the, 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 the building. Uh, I could, I've probably racked up dozens of those. <laughs> well, unlike you, I wasn't looking to get anything out of it, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I was I wasn't on the clock like I wasn't <laughs> doing it for a paycheck. It wasn't part of my job description. I did it out of the <laughs> kindness of my heart. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that'll wrap up American Psycho. I mean, I, I like the movie a lot. I, I think that it's got a lot going for it. It's got the energy, the performance. Uh, it's got the, the soundtrack. It's got the. the several really funny scenes like Bill's reactions to things are fantastic and it does have that subtext which I think adds a lot to the movie um, even if the ending is a little murkier uh, than it maybe needs to be but uh, you know there you go that's, yeah, that's good because I, I love yeah. that that scene early on when he's describing his, his, his routine he's like almost oh, his skin tear mm. routine and he's like I shampoo with this mm. I use this and he has that shot of taking off the, the, the peel of the mask and it's, oh, yeah. like, and it's really creepy but it's like supposed to be a normal thing but it's intentionally creepy <laughs> as shit so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's like a lot of good scenes in the movie, but I don't know, for some reason it just doesn't like come together for me. Like it's I, I, again, I'm not going to say it's like a bad movie, you know, by by any stretch. It just uh I don't know, maybe it's just like a little too over the top or something. Um and I mean, there's a lot of like really funny stuff in it, but I don't know, it just as as a whole for some reason it's not like it's something I'm super crazy about. Yeah. I think Christian Bale should do a follow-up to this called American Psychic. Ooh, okay. So he, he gets uh, some type of brain powers? Yeah. Okay. Patrick <laughs> Bateman gets it. superpowers. <laughs> how many idea. times do you want... Like, uh, how many times uh, when you're talking about it do you almost say Jason Bateman? <laughs> I, I think, I think you, you almost say Jason Bateman and you also sometimes may say Batman instead. <laughs> 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 Which notably, this was a few years before he, sure. he got cast as a uh, Batman, so it's, it's it's funny how he had a character that was so close. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, as we all know, Batman is a psycho who loves killing, so I guess it works. Well, if your name is Zack Snyder, you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsensical comments from that man recently. I do not abide. I do not abide at all. Tim, <laughs> what are you rating American Psycho? Uh, I mean, I can't go too low because there there are scenes I legitimately enjoy, but I also feel like I can't go too high because I, you know, I, I you know I wasn't super excited, uh, you know, watching it. Um, but uh, like I said, I would maybe like to give it one more chance and maybe with a little more, uh, you know, subtext and in, in for some things. But uh, I'm just gonna give it a six point five uh, for now, which. Yeah, a little low, I know, but what can I say? I can't, uh, you know, it just I was try, does, I, doesn't get me. <laughs> I was trying to do Bill's face in that scene where he's talking to Jared Lewis. It's, it's a gift from him. Uh, like, 
So you know, I, I can't do exactly, but it's just great. Um, you look more like Kermit. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to give it a eight point five. I can't quite go any higher than that because uh, the end is a bit murky. Uh, in terms of its intentions, uh, which does leave a kind of a weird ambigu- ambiguity to it that wasn't necessarily the intended ambiguity as as admitted by the director. Um, uh, but it's got great energy, it's got great scenes, it's relentlessly entertaining. Like, it's, like there's not a second of this movie where I'm bored. Like, I, I'm constantly into watching how he he talks and reacts to things. It's, it's a fascinating watch in that level. Uh, so, 8.5, plus you've got all the subtext and stuff, and you've got crazy scenes, you got Feed Me the Cat and all that sort of thing. So, there you go. Yeah, you gotta have your feed the cat moment. Yeah. <laughs> Save the cat, feed the cat, well, you know. <laughs> Whatever it is. As long as there's a cat in there. <laughs> Sorry? As long as there's a cat in there. Sure. That's fair, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, next up, next up then, um, I don't know what's next up on Screams. So you'll, you'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we never do. <laughs> we never do that. <laughs> yeah, you'll, fi- you'll, you'll find out soon. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be a vote up on Patreon. Uh, at least at the time of recording, mm-hmm. there is. This will be going up in another week or two's time. Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, the old vote will have finished, the new one will be going up soon. But, you know, check out Patreon, patreon.com slash Uh where you can support us for as little as a dollar. At the dollar tier, you get access to a bonus episode once per month we just started doing that in March and the first one was Invisible Maniac well you'll find out what the second one is at some point for, for April uh, and you can get that at $1 at the $5 tier you get to vote on the episode once per month uh, which leads to these kind of episodes where the winner uh, is discussed uh, so you can check out that stuff get us on Twitter at Screams Midnight uh, you can also support us by liking subscribing all that stuff letting us know what you thought of the movie in the comments and, yes. and starting a bit of discourse uh uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, that's pretty much us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Any final things you'd like to add, Tim? About anything? Uh, Life? You know, just... Uh, you know, there's just too much um, too much hate out there, so just, you know, mm-hmm. be kind to one, eno- one another. You know, the first thing you should do when you wake up is tell a stranger you love them, I guess. It'd be a better world. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I told you I'm a really nice guy. <laughs> you, honestly, you you reiterating that over and over is just making me more and more convinced you're actually a psych- psychotic serial killer. <laughs> uh, yes. Who knows? And the Who only knows? reason why you've bought two dogs recently is just so you can feed some human remains to them to get rid of the evidence. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Although, <laughs> pigs would probably work better for that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the screws after midnight. Somehow, uh, you can of course, uh, uh, you know, look forward to more episodes and uh, check us out on on the social medias and whatnot, as I have aforementioned. Uh, but that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching scary movies guys and we will see you next time